Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now, let's go a little bit, a bit back in history to the year 2010. I'm going to be talking about a very sad day in sports, not for everybody, but for, nine, well, for Ghanaians and for Africans, because it was a day where uh, Ghana lost uh, on penalties to Uruguay in the World Cup. Um, and of course, it's it's sad because of how you know it all played out. I'll get into that later. Let's just share a couple of the details. Uruguay on this day ended Ghana's dream of being the first African team in the World Cup semi-finals when they won a penalty shootout 4-2 after their quarterfinal finished 1-1 at the end of extra time on that day. Um, Uruguay's substitute Sebastian Abreu got the decisive penalty with a cheeky chip over the goalkeeper Richard Kingston to set up a semi-final with Netherlands, who then shocked Brazil two goals to one. The teams could not be separated after um, extra time in a thrilling contest after Asamoah Asamo Gyan hit the bar with a penalty in the second minute of added time that was given when Uruguay striker Luis Suarez handled the ball on the line and was sent off. So no need for a lot of details you know, with this, but for football fans, you would remember this moment very, very well in 2010. It was a very, very, very ambitious uh, dream for Ghana, um, hoping that it could get into the semi-final of, of the um, uh, World Cup. Um, they had played Uruguay um, and the game ended 1-1 um, at the end of uh, normal time. Uh, it got into extra time and then Ghana was awarded a penalty and this was meant to be the decisive penalty that would have sent Ghana to the semi-finals and of course helped them beat Uruguay. But oh, before the penalty was given, let's first of all get to how the penalty was given. So it was a handball by world famous biter uh, Luis Suarez, who is known, you know, for that you know particular incident, and of course for being a kind of kind of ball on the pitch. Um, so he handled the ball just before it was getting in because it was meant to be a goal by Ghana, um, and so he was given a red card, sent off. Ghana was awarded the penalty. Asamoah Asamo again had an opportunity at that moment to send Ghana to the semi-finals. And he missed. So it was disaster completely for the whole African continent who was hoping to see Ghana cross into the semifinals. And then, of course, disaster also for Samoa uh, Gyan. Luis Suarez was hailed in Uruguay as the hero of that match because of the risk that he took for his country, getting a red card and saving them you know, from being kicked out. And eventually Ghana lost 4-2 in penalties. Ugh. But yes, football fans who followed the 2010 World Cup remember this moment very, very well mm. because it did hurt. Really, really, really did hurt when Asamoah again missed that penalty that should have sent them into, into the semifinals. Mm. Interesting story. Interesting story. For football there. fans, yes. Okay, um, moving on now, we're going um, to talk about politics, 1964. And it was in this day in history that the president of the U.S. Um, signed a law, signed an act into law that just revolutionized the way um, some things were practiced in the country. There were like lots of racial segregation in schools, at the workplace, you know. So um, President Johnson, on this day in history, signed the L, he was probably called LBJ Johnson, uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson, on this day in 1964, July 2nd, signed a landmark Civil Rights Act. So he had basically said that, um, you know, this, on, racial segregation across you know several sectors was unconstitutional and this was basically on the back of a 1954 case in brown versus board of education that we actually talked about here on the breakfast you know was this landmark case that basically tried to eliminate segregation in schools saying black people couldn't go to, couldn't go to schools that white people attended so on this day in history he signed this law saying that you know, there were going to be revolutions in the way politics was done, in the way people attended school, attended work. He signed this bill with more than 75 pens. More than 75 pens to sign that bill. He had invited guests to come witness this historic day. Um, the three major news networks, you know, covered this event that day. And, it, you know, it really is a remarkable day in the history of the U.S. It, it passed the most sweeping civil rights legislation you know, by Congress since the post-war reconstruction era. It's outlawed racial discrimination in employment. It's outlawed racial discrimination in education, in housing. It barred racial segregation in all states sponsored public places such as schools, buses, parks, swimming pools. It outlawed discrimination based on race, based on color, based on religion, based on national origins in hotels, in restaurants, in, you know, public, 
you know, places, basically. It, it, it set the groundwork for the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which then set the rules for the rights of um, African Americans to vote. So you could compare this to South Africa and how, you know, they signed laws that tried to erode apartheid um, one step at a time. So it was a very um, historic moment in the history of the U.S., 1964, with the signing of the Civil Rights Act. Well, Lynn, Lyndon B. Johnson has been described as an ally, you know, and of course, um, you know, this would always be remembered uh, this day and, you know, the signing of this act would always be remembered as one of the very, very major um, 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 you know, uh, uh, things that played out, you know, with regards to ending racial segregation. It still hasn't ended, but at least, you know, they're, they're a long way off. Well, and something, some something remarkable signed. he said when he signed that bill was that if government is to serve any purpose and it's to do for others what they can't do for themselves. Absolutely. And so, um, like I said, it hasn't ended, you know, but it's in, it's in a way better place than it was um, in the 50s and in, you know, in, in the 60s. Um, so, um, historic moment. Um, what was required then was for the minds of the people to completely change and for, you know, other, um, for, for America to continue to progress, you know, and, and continue to accept all regardless of race and, and, you know, culture and, you know, whatever, wherever they're coming from. Um, and that's one thing about laws, you know, and history. Um, you can sign a new act, you can sign a new bill. But if the conversations, if the body language, if the attitude doesn't change, then, you know, those laws don't necessarily, you know, wouldn't necessarily bring as much change as you want. Um, and, you know, bringing it down here to Nigeria, regardless of what uh, the uh, Gowon, you know, had stated at the end of the Civil War, the, of the Biafran War, if the attitude of Nigerians doesn't change towards the Southeasterners and towards the Eagles, then it doesn't seem like you know, a lot was learned from the war and, you know, some of all those declarations after the war um, hold any water. But yeah, congratulations to um, Americans. And of course, um, sorry to Ghana once again. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. So we're moving into our first major conversation for today. Uh, of course, the National Assembly has passed the Petroleum Industry Bill. Um, we're going to be speaking with an energy expert, uh, Bala Zaka, to share with us what this means and, you know, where we go from here after this bill has been passed, is the president also expected to sign it? We'll get into that after this uh, short break.